So has a board game ever changed you? I mean, has it ever altered your perspective on something or transformed your mood or helped to cultivate something new in your mind or in your heart or even just given you something new to think about? On today's episode, we're welcoming special guest Mandy Hutchinson to discuss how board games can do more than just provide fun. They can also teach. It's Games That Teach Part 2 on this episode of Board Game Faith. Well, oh, it was the abridged version. It was the abridged version. The abridged I was version. just getting in my groove. <laughs> well, welcome, everybody. We're so glad to have you here uh, for uh, Board Game Faith. My name is Daniel Hilty. My name's Kevin Taylor. And I'm Mandy Hutchinson. Hello. Hello. Mandy, welcome. We're so glad to have you here. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Got to so do it in two languages. The Canadian on the panel. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I want to ask where you're from. So yes, uh, je suis canadienne. I am Canadian. Uh, I speak English, mais je parle français aussi. I speak French as well. But yeah, yeah, I am from the nation's capital. Oh, educational moment! If you don't know, do you know what the nation's capital is? I, I think it's. Is it Ottawa? Yes. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> and its spiritual heart is Edmonton. <laughs> whoa, 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 duh. Okay. No. I'm from the I West, thought, but Edmonton, we no, don't talk. No, I thought it. that was the that was a <laughs> hockey joke. I'm sorry. Oh no, I know. I'm a very good one, actually. I'm actually from Alberta, which is very oh, close okay. to oh. you know from Calgary, Alberta, which is close to Edmonton. I, so that's why that makes it even I don't, funnier. I've never been to Edmonton. I, yeah. You know, you're, you're not missing any anything. Most <laughs> of our most of our Canadian listeners to this podcast are in Alberta. Uh, when, really? it, when, it, when it breaks down, you know, you know, like where the stores are from, most of our Canadian listeners are from Alberta. So, okay, we, we love, West is the best. Yeah. What do you call? Is it Albertans? <laughs> Who do? You, what do you call residents of Alberta? Yeah, Albertans. 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 We love Albertans. We, 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 we're <laughs> thankful for all of the Albertans. Um, <laughs> hey. So anyway, welcome, welcome to all of Thank our you. all of our Canadian listeners, and especially Mandy. Um, That's right. So, and Kevin, what are we talking about today? Today, we are revising the topic of one of our more popular episodes, which is games that teach, That because teaching is adjacent to the spiritual or religious life. I mean, so much of, of religion, spirituality is about learning and growing and expanding, hopefully, kind of like trees. You just kind of keep going up, 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 which, by the way, little side trivia fact if you carved Ooh. your initials in a tree 50 years later how tall would those initials be if you carved them say oh, like so three good. inches tall do you know this one i don't this is for the canadians too because they have a lot of trees and as a teacher Warehouse i should or. probably know this <laughs> i only know it because i'm reading this book and it mentioned it like last uh... i didn't know this two weeks ago They'd be the same because trees only grow on the top. They don't grow like the really? whole tree oh. only grows on the top. So it would so it wouldn't, it wouldn't go up. They don't the stretch. Tree. No, they don't. Interesting. Yeah, and it makes sense. They don't stretch. They just keep adding on the top, which is the overstory. But, yeah, that so does make sense. Yeah. yeah. So we are cool. supposed to keep growing and learning, and and board games are part of that. Is learning and growing about others or ourselves. And so we're excited to have a teacher and a podcaster this week and Mandy Hutchinson. Yeah, yeah. So we, we, Mandy is the perfect guest for this. Not only um, <laughs> knows board games so well, but also a, 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 a teacher too. Um, yeah. um, so, so Mandy, um, many of us know already as the co-host of the Salt and Sass podcast. Um, I was sharing with her before we went on the air uh, Mandy's been one of my favorite board game podcasters for, for a while now. And uh, if you haven't checked out the Salt and Sus pad podcast, I really encourage you to do it. It's, it's just great. It's always just uh, uh, joyful and positive and thoughtful. And, and even, even when they talk about a game that's kind of like a one and done, which is the, the phrase they use, it's just like, you know, maybe not the best game for them. They just right. do it in a very respectful way. Hmm. And, uh, and I just, I, I just love the podcast, so I really, really recommend it. Plus, I also share with Mandy, I, th I think 
um, she and Suzanne often recommend games that are very that vibe a lot with my kind of taste in games. Yeah. So I've spent a lot of money over the years <laughs> based on their recommendations, and I've and I've done all of it happily. It, they've been they've been great games. So so Mandy, yes, welcome to uh, Board Game Faith. We really appreciate your uh, your taking time to be with us. Thank you. Oh, thank you for the kind words, and thank you for having me. I'm always excited to talk about games and education. <laughs> yay! Yay! <laughs> So what got you into board gaming at first? Oh my goodness. Uh, ooh, that's a big question actually cuz <laughs> it's a couple of, it's a couple of things. It's um I think it would probably be family. That would be the big one. Uh so we had uh game time that was how would you say this? Voluntold game time. Mm. You could volunteer time but not really cuz in my house if your parents said something to you, that's what you were doing. There there was no uh there was no escaping that cuz otherwise, you know, the belt would be sitting by the table and it'd be like, "What were you doing again? We're playing games." Oh. <laughs> you had to Came play games. Came from a very strict household, but it was yeah. fun. It was more just yeah. like don't misbehave kind of thing. It was just like more of the threat. But right. um the actual playing games was really fun. So um we used to play, you know, like the Monopoly and the, you know, well, in Canada we had something called frustration. Um I think the equivalent would be trouble. We also had okay, trouble, right. but frustration okay. was like the Canadian okay. Okay. version. The thing and where you like, a... you hit the cup and the, the thing and yeah, it pops. Yeah, the little pop okay. yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah, then you yeah. move the pieces. Oh my gosh, my mom loved that game. But then we also played games like Dominoes, which was really big in our culture. So I have a very diverse background, um, you know, Portuguese, um, Caribbean. My, my parents from the Caribbean um, were like a mishmash, but Dominoes is huge. And so that was always something that we played. And chess. Chess was always something growing up that my family played. So games was just always part of the ritual, spending that family time together. Um, you know, that was that was the thing. Um, and then, although my brother might disagree because we were, oh gosh, now that I think about it, we were pretty evil when we played <laughs> some <laughs> games with him. Oh, I'm so sorry. Sorry, brother. Um, but uh, the second part of me getting into board games was um, when I was in school and I had a teacher tell me, I won't say their name, but um, they told me that I should never take math Oh, because I just oh. wasn't very good at it. And I was like, that to me was not the approach I was hoping yeah, uh, yeah. that they would take as a teacher. You know what I mean? So I was yeah. like, this made me want to become a teacher, but then also use games to make things fun. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I kind of have like a, a different reasons of like when I started getting into gaming and then when I got back into gaming. So that kind of second, that second part was when I kind of got back into it. So did you take math? After I that? did to prove her and myself that I could do it. And I took math right up until uh, university, I think. I, d I didn't take it in university up until that point. I mean, did I get 90%? No, but I was very happy with my 75% because I worked hard for it. <laughs> Absolutely. There's the competitive streak, right? That's it. <laughs> Good. Prove them wrong. That's awesome. Exactly. Where do you live now? Uh, so, do I, I'm, so I am in O-Town. Ottawa, mm -hmm. <laughs> in Ontario, Canada. Um, but formerly, I, I was born and raised in Alberta. So Calgary, Alberta is uh, where I'm at. Is that what you meant? As in yes, like... Yes, yes, Okay, just wanted to make sure. I'm like, work-wise. <laughs> well, so, yeah. do you want to talk... What is your work? Tell us about that. Yeah, so I, I hope no one takes that, uh, that I'm on here as a six for a nine sort of thing. But I am a teacher by trade. I did teach kindergarten through grade eight. Um, but currently, I teach adults and I work for the federal government in Canada and uh, yeah and I also work in policies and programs so I also facilitate courses but I also create content for courses so it's a little bit of a different avenue but uh, yeah I did teach in the public and Catholic school boards for um, for a few years how, how has that that must have been a, a shift I would imagine to go from kindergarten through eighth yep. through adult policy and program education Oh, so you think the children are the hard part? No. <laughs> Adults are very set in their ways. You know what I mean? And hey, I've been guilty of this too. You know, you like to do things a certain way. And then when someone goes, well, this is another way that you could try doing it. Well, no, I've always done it this way. Kids are, you know, a little more, their brains are a little more malleable. They're willing to at least try it. They may not like it at first, but they're at least willing to, to try it. So right. it was harder. It's harder with adults, I find. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you find, 
do you find have you found discovered ways of kind of getting through the uh, the rigidness of the adult brain to to teach them some some tricks or techniques along the way or I, I and maybe this is the so I'm very open about this and maybe this is a benefit of having ADHD you get really creative with <laughs> with doing things and right. I make it my mission for those people who are you know maybe a little more we'll say challenging uh, when you have sessions it's my mission now to make sure that they le leave the class learning something new whether their opinion changes completely is up to them but at least if they've learned something new um yeah so i try to use examples that would potentially relate to them or something that's you know that they work in or whatever the case may be and i find that generally helps yeah. um or getting their opinion on something might be in the beginning they don't agree or we we have you know we are not seeing eye on a certain thing but that's okay i still want to acknowledge and hear you and then how can we take what you know now and how can we learn something else and do things a little differently that you know is a, it works well for everybody not just you yeah yeah so yeah a sense of um uh kind of agency and ownership in the conversation as well that it's not just being talked at or something that they have that's it like yeah, i'm not there but, yeah, i mean right. yes i do have policies and things i have to tell you that you need to do and those are right. non-negotiables you know when you're talking about right. guidelines and and you know rules um, but outside of that, yeah, we should still be open to having a discussion as long as we're not being offensive or anything like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I remember um, it was a couple years ago. No, it's more than that because it was before COVID. But um, and I apologize. I don't remember all the details, okay. but there there was a there was a there there was a, a, a some some incidents at a, at, at a board game convention and mm. and, and that you uh, hosted a video conversation uh, about oh, yes. <laughs> boundaries and borders, and uh, and I thought you did a really great job of navigating, you know, some difficult waters to talk about. But but you but you did that in a very helpful, educational, respectful way. And I, anyway, so I just I, I can imagine hearing you talk about policies and procedures. So that's maybe maybe a little <laughs> glimpse of the kind of stuff you do. Sure. Yeah. yeah actually, okay. now is that the video I did with Suzanne at BGG? Because we did a couple. We've done one on harassment prevention, and that was more recent. And then there was one a long time ago where Suzanne and I had a discussion. It must have been Suzanne, because this was like, I think this was before COVID. This was a while ago. Okay, because there was, yeah, a video. I had like a whole panel of people, and then there was yes. one with just Suzanne and I. Oh, okay. And, yeah. Okay, so if it's the panel one, yeah, that was a talk about uh, harassment, because I think people were a little yeah. confused about the definition, like, well, what is harassment is, you know, touching someone harassment i'm like well that's consent but that could lead to xyz but i think people were maybe not fully understanding um the definition of certain things and uh, there are some people that willfully choose to ignore these definitions and i mean you hope in time that they'll learn um yeah. but yeah that's definitely a, a conversation that needed to happen and still is yeah. happening so no i appreciate you to for sure uh, looking at that yeah, no, it was it was good. I rec recommend it to our listeners. If to, to is that on YouTube? We can link link to it. Yeah, is it? Amazing. I would it's, think so. I think it's still on the dice. It's on the dice tower. So okay. that's uh, well, where you would find that it video. It yeah, and, and link that. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yep. So, where do you find these two worlds intersecting for you, Mandy? Where where do you see your your interest in board games and teaching coming together? How how have they overlapped for you? Oh my goodness! So <laughs> at work now, I'm known as you know, like if there's an event or something happening, ooh, Mandy, we're coming to you, looking for you to bring some board games or some kind of activity on the scene. I'm like, oh my goodness, pressure, especially when like <laughs> the you know deputy minister is asking you to put together an event. Oh, wow, that's yeah. huge, you know. Or just if we're teaching um, uh, a course. And they'll be like, okay, how am I going to make people remember and understand these definitions? And then it's like, ah, games. And, mm. you know, I'm learning French again. So, yes, I speak French, but, you know, one can always improve on their language. Mm. And uh, games are great because I came from a province that was primarily English speaking. So I did not learn French like a lot of people who are from Eastern Canada. So I had to learn it as an adult. And uh, okay. games helped me out with that. So, yeah, anything that's going to make something that might not be so interesting, more interesting, <laughs> then I'm, yeah. I'm happy to throw games in the mix because I love that too. Have you, have you found yourself like designing games to specifically to teach something or do you find that these other games that games that are already out there that you can use to- Oh, I see what you mean. 
Uh, oftentimes, it depends on what I'm doing. So sometimes I will take a game, and and I say this because I'm not here to destroy or change people's work, alter it slightly to, you know, accommodate the lesson that I'm teaching. Sometimes it doesn't matter the actual gameplay. It's just the there's like a dynamic or something I need from that game uh, yeah, to teach yeah. a lesson. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, I, I, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Our, our, I mean, um, you, you could just lock them in the room with the, a game of Root and only <laughs> French instructions and tell them they can't come out till they actually beat you at the game. Wow. And then you're that, they, they might that, quit, actually. It's like Saw, <laughs> but remember the movie Saw? It's like Saw, but yes. R8. Let me uh, out. Let me out. <laughs> First, cut your arm I, off. I don't know how to yeah, say exactly. that in French. <laughs> yeah, that's literally how it would go, <laughs> the anger. <laughs> You, you both you both share a, a fondness of horror, I believe. Uh, <gasps> are you in horror movies horror? and things? I do. Yes, I've been I've been slacking a little bit, but yes, I okay. My mom, <laughs> it's all from my mother, and she probably let me watch horror movies way too young. But yes, I love horror movies. <laughs> nice. Yes, I had an eighth grade teacher actually who read yes. this read us. This was eighty four. Okay, eighteen eighty four. And uh, she read <laughs> us a Stephen King short story. And I was like, that was awesome. So I went and started reading all the Stephen King. And then nice. I worked at a local video store back with the VHS. And they had in there, inside the store was like a little fake front porch. And it was the haunted okay. house for the yeah. horror movies. And and so I was Ooh. always intrigued. So, yeah, I've always had a... a, a fondness for the horror stuff so nice. um, do you like the i'm not a fan of like gory is like i prefer more so horror is a weird one for me some gory stuff is okay but i if i find at that point then i almost want a touch of like humor to it versus right. like movies like the exorcist or you know i know i'm sorry and I, and this is always something when i was in catholic school that i got in a lot of trouble for <laughs> you're good but i do like the supernatural yeah you're yeah. good here yeah Okay, I gotta I gotta throw that out there because some people are not okay with the supernatural. That is something that I I do enjoy. Yeah, Wait, no, you're why with... don't why don't they like the supernatural? You're in a safe don't. place here. It's... You're good <laughs> because they <laughs> well, think it's you know... and like it's demonic yeah. or that because yes. they think it's yeah yeah. And I mean, no, I guess to a certain stories. I mean, I guess. <laughs> Sure, I don't like really believe that it? people get possessed by demons personally. So I, I, right. And then because they have in a lot of these movies, the like, you know, the priest is usually exercising the demon and then, you know, they, anyway, it, it's not so much the talk about it, but I think it's when people start believing it and then they got a little, you know, people would go into the bathroom, shut off all the lights and, you know, it wasn't Candyman at that time. It was something else that related to religion. That and, you, you know, that... If you, if you say three times, then you're in trouble. Yeah, then yeah. she would appear and, you know, yeah. some stuff like that. I I didn't do it because I was too scared. No. <laughs> I, I, I believe in it, but I've never said it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I guess it only... Yeah, exactly. It's only what you believe in, right? To put into it. that come, But I, right, mm, right. I don't... When it comes to the otherworldly things, I don't mess around with that. I don't do Ouija boards. I don't do any of that stuff. <laughs> no. Gotcha, gotcha. On our on our previous episode, or right before this, we interviewed somebody who did a documentary on the satanic panic of D Dungeons and Dragons. You know, how people were just kind of really oh. scared of it from the eighties, and kind yeah. of similar similar vibe. Yeah, you know, just this, this yeah. sense that there's this fear that you know that if if you uh, watch the horror film or play the Dungeons and Dragons or whatever, that, that you'll just something will happen. Somehow, you know, twists you or or yeah, yeah. I just so. I don't. I just I, like I am very respectful of what other people believe in. Yeah. And, uh, you know, my boyfriend, he's not Catholic. He's not. That's way on the other spectrum of what we're talking about right now. And mm -hmm. I find it very fascinating. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like for me, anything that's not living or I just I don't mess around with that. Yeah. Whether yeah. people believe it or not, leave it alone. That's mm. just. Don't yeah, do it. <laughs> yeah. Sure, sure, sure. But watching a movie is fine. Like talking about it, watching a movie, it's cool. But yep. stay away from playing with trinkets and right, right, things like right, that. Don't call, right. don't call the dead, please. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, right, right. No, it makes sense. It makes sense. So you mentioned you mentioned um, using games to help you learn French. And mm -hmm. how how did that how did that happen? If I'm asking, what, is, what were some examples of that? Yeah, sure. So there's one game which I, I have a love-hate relationship with it. It's good for learning 
but I had to play it so much that I kind of dislike it, but I don't at the same time. And that's uh, Milborn. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, when I moved to Ontario, that was like the game to learn French, you know, because you had your stop, your go, your, oh, my God. Yes. And I swear, I didn't yes. want to see that game for like a long time after that because I was <laughs> so frustrated. But it was good for learning basic words and trying to explain. So the teacher was like, okay, if you're playing this card, what does it do? Tell me what you would like to do. And as someone who hadn't, like, had no French, um, it was it was difficult, but I appreciated the visual. I like things yeah. that have a visual. Yeah. So even mm. if I can't, if I don't know a word, I can describe it mm. in the language. And I thought that was very helpful. So games like that. That's a good point. I, I haven't really thought about, but, but yeah, I mean, games in this, they're like, you know, utterly abstract with, with no theme at all. I mean, there, there's usually some sort of visual reinforcement of what you're doing and and, yes. te- and, and, and helping you to learn and, and to immerse in the experience at least a little bit. Sort of, yeah, that's a good... Yeah, and then you just... We do it in English all the time. When you forget a word, right? You're like, um, okay, you know the... So if we're talking about, you know, like the, the, the shelf that I have in the back, right? You know the thing that holds all the, the, the games right. and... You know what I mean? Yeah, you describe yeah, yeah. it. Right, right, so that's right. a habit that I tried to do with French. So when I would play with games, I would use whatever the context or picture there was to help me explain what I was trying to do, trying to yeah. say mm-hmm. in French. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's very that's helpful. Great. That's great. Yeah. It, it reminds me, uh, uh, talking about kind of totally respecting people's works, but maybe altering for a certain um, a, yeah. a certain goal. Or Our, our, uh, our son... Um, uh, just graduated from college. He he lived in the oh, nice. in the German language house there at his college, oh. and uh, and his favorite one of his favorite games is Anomia. Um, oh, <gasps> so it's a, good! It's such a good game. So good. Kevin, have you played Anomia? No, but I think you've told me about it. Oh, <gasps> Kevin! It's You're... a great oh, game. It's, it's great... so good. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, so they they made a they made a house uh, version of that where it was all German nice. words, you know, to kind of to try to, to try to yeah. So it was a nice way to kind of work <laughs> on their German there. Um, That's yeah, so good. Anomia is is the one game. No, I shouldn't say the one game, but maybe one of three games that mm-hmm. all all four of us in our family will agree to play. Uh, really? Telestrations is the other one. Okay, Anomia, but everyone. Everyone loves Anomia. Wait, what? Yeah. What are the other two now? Now you can't leave yeah, us I'm hanging curious. there. We're just two, right? Uh, I said that. Now what do I? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. No, 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 no. It's a good question, and I said it. Uh, Telestrations is is the reign supreme. That's the number one that that all four of us will always happily play. Uh, our okay. we have two children. One who just graduated from college. One who's in college. Um, um, Anomia is certainly, yeah, is certainly uh, number two oh, wow. after that, and then number three. Um, I don't know. It'd probably be maybe something like, like strike, you know, strike. Oh, uh, strike's yeah, a good yeah. one. Yeah, I forgot yeah. about strike. Yeah. So uh, our um, our uh, our children, who who are absolutely awesome, they don't um, um, you know, they don't just how they're wired. They they don't quite get into the heavier board games as much. But but the kind of the lighter right. stuff like Telestrations and Anomia and Strike. They really, really love, and they're very gracious. On my birthday and Father's Day, they'll still play heavy games with me just because they know that I like Aww. that. So, yeah, they're very nice. That's nice. Um, I love that. Yeah. So anyway, yes, yes, yes. But you haven't played no. Anomia, Kevin. Is that, no. You know, it's a card super game. Good. I was just looking it up. Yeah. It's yeah. like, uh, you know when you have that, you're trying to think of something? This happens to me all the time when you're like, uh, uh, yeah. what the, uh, like it's on the tip of your tongue, but you can't get mm-hmm. it out. That's yes. that game. If I, isn't that what the word anomia means? Like it means I an think experience so. of like, yeah. uh, I can't say it, but I know what it is. Yeah, yeah. And those with ADHD, this is our life on uh, a regular uh... basis. <laughs> so it, it, it's, it, it's kind of a, it's a teaching game in that it maybe helps others yeah. to understand that experience a little bit more, maybe. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's great. It really yeah. forces you, for me, I have to force myself to, even though I know you have to answer quickly, it actually forces me to be like, hey, Answering quickly is not helping you right now. Right. Step back, right, take right. a minute, and right. then even if I don't get the card, I still want to say the answer just to yeah. kind of yeah. get that out. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because because then it's just kind of itching your brain, and you need, right? you need to get it out. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, so can you think of some examples that you say of of games that are of, of games that are maybe really good at teaching something? Yeah. And and then, and 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 I realize you're always always very respectful and positive, and so don't want to put you on the spot either. But if as part of that conversation, if you could think of any examples of games that 
I don't know, maybe in, on the other side of the scale, maybe yeah. not quite as good at teaching things. Sure. And yeah, yeah, and at the end of the day, there are just some good games that are great to play, but not necessarily good for educational purposes. Yeah. Um, yeah. But some go-to games that I use, I use a lot of classic games. So um, in my current job, or actually even when I was teaching in the schools with the younger kids, Jenga was really popular. Um, but I use Jenga either as an icebreaker kind of tool. So I would actually yeah. put topics or things on the on the tiles or on the oh, yeah. pieces. Yeah. So if you took out that piece, you'd either have to answer the question or whatever the topic was I was discussing, you had to say something about it. It's a great idea. So yeah, so that was really great for icebreakers, but it was also good with kids when we're like learning certain aspects and then they'd pick one and they, you know, you'd have to say a word or like for language, do you know what I mean? If I write something in English, tell me what the word is in French and then you have to place the block and then if it falls down, then, you know, you have to give me a sentence or something like this, you know, um, oh, fun yeah. things like that. So those were great for like younger children, but really great for adults as well. Um, any type of strategy game is really good. Um, and I know a lot of people will usually kind of preface something like uh, Catan or something along those lines. Again, these are games that we all know from, you know, maybe when we first started playing in the hobby. They just can't be too complex. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's why something like Catan is pretty straightforward. And that, you know, that's where you get your um, critical thinking, planning. Mm -hmm. You know, I I, I would yeah. even venture yeah. to say communication skills. That's your negotiation, right? Right, um, right? Which is something I struggled with. Communication for me, especially in front of people was mm. horrible. I mm. refused to do it. <laughs> I was very shy and really? I forced, oh, I was so, I'm, I am not an extrovert as people think I am. Huh. <laughs> so I had to force myself to step out of that and, you know, get involved. And that's another reason why games were great for me because I got excited to play games and I could talk about it and not be worried about what people were thinking about right. me while I was talking about it. So yeah, so games that have any type of strategy are great because it does promote some of that um, logic or critical thinking. Uh, Catan right. is one example. I'm trying to think, um, even sometimes games like um, Azul, you know, pattern recognition, that sort Azul of thing. Azul is great. I really like it. Yeah, Azul. which is fantastic. It can get it's a little easy, mean too. It's easy, but complex, yeah. <laughs> right, yes, exactly. I love that, exactly that. So it's rules that are straightforward. But the, the, the idea of the game, it is, has some complexity to it, which I appreciate. And you still want that kind of thinking for, um, for whoever you're teaching, right? Yeah. I made a little list here. Hold on. I have That's more. Great. That's great. I got to scroll a little bit here. Sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Then I think I mentioned uh, planning, observation, matching, identification. These are skills that can be found with games like Quirkle. Oh, yeah. 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 So I don't know I if people Quirkle. know. Yeah. Quirkle's great. It's been around for a long time. It's one to have different shapes and you're trying to group them together based on tiles that you acquire. So that's yeah, a really yeah. good one. Um, taboo is one we play a lot in French class. <laughs> and it's uh... so hard because my teacher will pick a word. I'm like, I don't even know what this is. <laughs> and you have to describe it without using all the words that she's given you. And then the other people in the class have to guess. Right. Do you know the struggle of doing that when you don't even fully understand the word? That would be Make great for learning creative. a language. Yeah, yeah. But it forces you. I think I get frustrated, but then I'm just like, it's just a game. Yeah. <laughs> so, you could do code names for that too, right? Code names is good. And I'm glad they do make a French version um, because of the French alphabet and stuff. It's different. That's why any kind of like Scrabble code names, any kind of word games or anything like that, mm -hmm. it, it makes it easier if there is a French version. But yeah, you could totally just make your own and that would totally work because you need the descriptor, right? Mm -hmm. Which is what they want you to start talking. Yeah. Um, I have Ticket to Ride, which is just good for uh, geography. So, uh, yes, I know I'm a teacher. Geography is not my strong suit. I kind of know where things are. I mean, Canada, yes. America, I'm like, I know it's kind of west. I know it's kind of east <laughs> sort of thing. But I'm like, it's not it's not amazing. But uh, I'm American there... and I have the same in anything west of Tennessee kind of just. <laughs> it's hard. Just you all have a lot to remember. <laughs> We're we're out we're out here in Missouri. I'm out here in Missouri. That is often referred to as as the flyover zone for for much of the country. <laughs> you just as you go from coast to coast, you just wave at Missouri as you fly over. Us. And some of the yeah, states, yeah. the borders are it's like they were decided by a drunk person. We're like, well, we'll just go up here and then right. you know just little panhandles <laughs> and crazy things. And I'm sure there's all sorts of bad okay. history. I don't know about behind that. Sure. You know yes. what? And it's I, funny. I never thought about that, but you're absolutely right. Like, There's a reason why lines and things are like, yeah, I didn't even think about that myself. Mm -hmm. um, 
But there was a game actually that uh, really tested my geography because the cubes kept covering the states. Um, oh, what is it called? Women. The name just went right out of my head. Oh, this is gonna. It, anyway, it's a game I spoke about recently. I'm so sorry. The name went right out of it's my head, but it's voting? about women. Sorry. It's one about voting. Yes, yes, the women's uh, in voting. Oh my goodness. Is that? Yeah, I haven't. I've just. It's seen it you know which one i'm talking about, about though, yeah right? i don't know anything yeah. about it by tory tory brown yeah so i i talked about it on the bgg podcast and on the salt and sass podcast and it was a game uh, about you know women's rights and getting the right to vote mm -hmm. and um it was really honestly that would be great for a history lesson i was really yeah. i was really involved in it i was even i was even describing it using the exact words that they and i that were used mm. in the game i'm not that person i'm usually like the blue thingy that goes here that's how I describe games, but that's how I was involved, so involved in this game because I was remembering the terminology. Um, but yeah, so that's another one that'd be great even just to learn a little bit about history and uh, the gameplay is really good. I would recommend, obviously, for potentially like older students. Um, is it called Votes yeah. for Women? Votes for Women. Thank Votes you. Women. I'm like, sure, Votes Women? There's a yeah. word I'm missing. <laughs> yeah, cool, cool. So if you haven't tried it, it's quite good. I highly recommend it. Um, and that would be a great one for teaching uh, history. So yeah, but trivia games are another one. Just any, like mm -hmm. I mentioned, uh, I think there's, what's that one there? Trivia, Trivial Pursuit or anything like that. Or, I mean, you can make your own questions if you want, but those are always great mm -hmm. um, for learning. So Wits and Wagers is another one, things like that. Yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah, yeah those, are, those are great ones. And mm -hmm. I hadn't thought about the, the, the usefulness, this theme you've returned to a, a few times, the usefulness of games and learning language, but that's, that's, so, mm -hmm. that's so very true. Um, last night, um, we have a, we have a, a church game group and, and, um, some of the students as a, we're, I'm moving they, as a farewell gift. They, they gave me, um, some games and one of them was poetry for Neanderthals, um, okay. which I had not played before, but I, I got <laughs> thinking that would be really good because the idea is it, it like so many cards, so many things you, you get a, a word on a card and you have to get your yeah. teammates to guess it. But the trick is you can only use one syllable words. <gasps> And if you're I learning this. another language, oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is. And if you get it wrong, they bonk you with the with inflatable the, club. Yes. <laughs> uh, that's okay. Cool. Can I tell you who taught me that game? Thank you, Mr. Eric Lang, for that because he loves really? that. Game. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Oh, I, 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 wow. That that elevates the game even more for me. To right. That's that Eric Lang. What does he like game. so much about it? Just, <laughs> sounds super I interactive. Think he, Oh, I think he loves that part of it. And then watching me make a fool of myself, I think that's part of it. No, I'm kidding. I'm totally joking. I mean, a little joking. <laughs> I think it's just, I think with him, he likes games where you can have that interaction and you're just being social and having fun. Mm -hmm. Like one of his favorite games is Time's, Time's Up. Yes. He yes. loves that game. So yes. I think anything like that where you could just be silly and have fun, throw caution to the wind, if you will. I think that's probably the reason. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, those are great games. Those are he great. did uh, Cthulhu Death May Die, which is such a great game. I yeah. haven't played it. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Is so it? Good. Yeah. It looks good. It's great. Because he did that with Rob Davio, I believe. Did he not? I think, think so. so, yeah. Yeah, I think that was like a, a, a duo design, and uh, it looks super cool. I just um, I just haven't played it yet. Yeah. Okay, it's, add it's it to my list. Fun. It's cool. got a... a Pulp Fiction, sci-fi kind of element to it, where you yeah. you're kind of zany caricature people, and then as you go insane, you get even more powerful. So it's kind of like we've got to kill some cultists before dinner, and then you go, <laughs> and then like somebody's getting nuts with their gun, and then you know it's like a little girl with a teddy bear and a gun. It's just it's Love kind of it. it's got a goofy, scary like you were talking about horror but you need a little humor it's got it's got yeah. a bit of that that just makes it uh, fun okay so this okay i see this i i've been playing so i play video games mm -hmm. and um i've been playing well it's not been getting great reviews online but redfall it's but that's what that reminds me of when huh. you just started uh -huh. talking about that okay. that kind of art and the way that it is and i've been so having pulp a blast heroes yeah they're kind of yeah. almost like weird superhero type yeah, yes that's fun i love it I'm going to have to try it now. That sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah. So if you go too crazy, you die. But if you get crazy enough, you get better skills to try to stop the monsters. Okay. So you're kind cool. of trying to keep it in a, a good zone there. Is I it think... long, uh, like a long gameplay? 
I don't think so once you know it. I don't think so, okay. but you do have to set up. It's got the, the Gloomhaven type thing where you've got the different pieces, so you've got to set up a map. And right. it's co-op, so that's kind of nice. Okay, that's cool. I like that. Is it, is it Chance the Rapper that has a song that we, we, we all need to go a little crazy to make it? Is that something like you're uh... – is, I don't of you know, know this song. song, but it's okay. Anyway, can you, can it's you sing a little, Daniel? <laughs> oh my goodness! Well, <laughs> you I'm just kidding. You, you, you I, I, I should, I should uh, tell her. I, I think it's got some expletives in it too. But, but oh, it's, uh, but it's, got um, it. no, but it's a good. It's, it, it is a good one. It's, um, um, I'll have to look, look it up now. I, I actually don't know it. I think it's okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Do you want us so, to give you a trap beat? Fit, lay down a trap beat for me, if you don't mind, Kevin. Um, yes. My name is Daniel, and I'm here to say. Okay, that's all I got. That's all I got. <laughs> that's all I got. Okay, but that's okay. That was not actually Chance the Rapper, Daniel. No, no, it's not. It's <laughs> that not. was Daniel the Rapper. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's right. I do like Chance the Rapper a lot. Um, do you? I really like a lot. I do. What do you like I about do. him? Interesting. Yeah. He's, his, well, um, uh, you, you know, we, we often talk about kind of religious, spiritual stuff here on the, on the podcast. Yeah. Um, he has really spiritually deep lyrics, and, and just they're really profound and uh, not not every song not every song of course sure but um but some of his songs are just so um just wrestle so profoundly with um spiritual matters and matters of humility and what does it mean to love my neighbor and um they're just really good and i think this one i think the song i'm thinking of again it's got expletives so sure be be warned (laughs) listeners (laughs) but um but i think it's i think it's a song of about the day he got married, I think it's called the greatest day of my life or something like that. Oh, but cool. it's very sweet. Um, but um, but but it has this this um, it has this recurring theme that um, you know we're not going to make it unless we get a little. It kind of just and, and I've heard this in other. Th- I think Seal had a yeah. song about this too. So, but this this way of kind of needing to go a little crazy to make it in the world. And and I don't mean right. to use that term. I know sometimes that term can be hurtful know, but... for people, and I don't mean it sure. in a hurtful way. But um, anyway, that was a major tangent. So no, but that's okay. For... That's that's uh, that's what you have. That's what happens when you have someone with ADHD on the show. We go down rabbit holes and then we oh, come back. So it was my major <laughs> in college was tangents. Actually, was I? Oh. I yeah, I like Perfect. that. About you. I like that about you. You you, you were you were tangent summa cum laude, I believe. I'm a tangent. <laughs> we went to college. Speaking of which, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now that you mention it. Now that you mentioned it, <laughs> but butterflies do have wings. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> uh, actually, I don't think I finished answering your question. Yes, I yes. I'm sorry. Let's go back to you. No, that's me. I just kind of went off, and I'm like, oh yeah, wait now. Uh, <laughs> oh, before I uh, before I get into the second part of your question about games, maybe that are not. Uh, maybe conducive to learning. Uh, there are some Access Plus games. So it's uh, it's an initiative that's through Asmodee. I don't know if you've heard of it. And uh, for some reason, the names of all of these games are not coming to me. I'm sorry. It's been a long week. I'm a little tired. Um, but um, do you know the game Spot It? Yes. Yes. Okay. So yeah. they're taking games like Spot It. Uh, there's another trivia type one. It's escaping me right now. And they're revamping them in a way um, that are useful for people who are maybe have dementia or things like that, mm. or people who have ADHD or people, you know, the, the, you know, any kind of challenges and they're making the game a bit more accessible. I so these are newer games to the market. Like they've taken games that exist and just kind of revamp them in a different way, making cards bigger, more tactile and things like that. And um, I do find things like that should try and make their way to classrooms, hospitals um, as teaching tools or healing tool so i just want to throw that out there that um access plus games you should check those out there i think they're only three right now and i apologize i can't think of all of them at the moment um but um amazing this, and i think yeah, that's good that's it's just like a, a a specific line that asmodee is, is releasing called access plus games sort of is that how we're doing yeah it? exactly okay. so they're they're basing it on games like and I, this is driving me wild that i can't think of the name of it but it's timeline spot it timeline mm. mm-hmm there's a third one, and this is where my memory is going to escape me here. I apologize, but you can okay. check it out. But yeah, it's an initiative that's through, um, that I guess is funded through Asmodee um, for putting these games out in the market. And you'll see them uh, more so in game stores. I was hoping to have a box with me. I, I think I packed it in my back shelf there. Um, but um, if you go to the game stores, uh, they are pulling them in now, so you'll be able to see them. But if you like, hey, I love Timeline, but you know, there's someone that you love that maybe is suffering from dementia or something along those lines. Hey, we can play this together because they've made it in a way that it's a bit more accessible. Ah, that's fantastic. 
I love that. Yeah. So it's a teaching and slash healing kind of uh, uh, thing for games. So Access Plus, check it out if you can't if you have a chance to do that. And then uh, to answer your final question, I'm yes. actually not going to give any examples. Sure, sure. Of specific games because I mean, there are just some, we were talking about. Was it Cthulhu Must Die? Sure. I'm sure we could find a lesson somewhere in there, <laughs> but it might not be conducive to a classroom setting. Do you know sure. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So once you start getting into games that have a specific theme or uh, are too complex, I think those are games that maybe are not necessarily going to be something you want to use in the classroom as a tool. It shouldn't overpower the lesson. It's meant to complement the lesson, right? Ooh, that's a good so, bit. Yeah, that's, that's important. Yeah. That's kind of what you have to think about. So uh, roll and writes are great depending on what you're teaching. If it's just a specific concept, like I used roll and write games um, at my current job when I was teaching uh, like supervisors and how they uh, have relationships with their employees. So then I would get them, I'd give them a roll and write, very simple roll and write. Here you go. Here's the, here's the game. Here are the rules, which is like, they were like a page long. I'd like you to learn the game. I didn't say how they had to learn it. And I want you to play the game. And then I'm going to come and you're going to explain it to me and see if you got the rules right and score. And Aww. it was very interesting to see the different ways that they communicated. Some people would just take the rules and would just read it. And then the other person was kind of just like hanging out, sitting there versus other people would do the rules with someone together. Guess what? They were getting all the rules wrong, but that wasn't the point. The point was, I just wanted to see how they related with that person. Like they were doing it together. So it was wrong, but they were at least getting it wrong together. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hmm. So. Yeah. Do you, when you introduce games in a work setting like that, do you, do you find that most people are open to that? Do you need to kind of do a little persuading arm twisting at, at first or, or? No, they're, they're pretty good actually. Yeah. This is why I said stick with simple. As soon as you start yeah. getting complex, people turn right off. They're like, oh, this is too much for me. Something like a simple roll and write like that. They're fine. Yeah. I have people like, Ooh, where do you get this game? I, I really like that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I'll also use RPGs. RPGs are great hmm. um, for role playing. I'll use our, uh, elements from RPGs, um, like co like a character creation, and I literally will call it that. You know, you're creating a character of yourself, and then here are these situations. What are the tools this character needs in order to combat these challenges? Oh, so, goodness. yeah, RPGs are probably one of the best teaching tools you could use in the classroom for adults or for children. Hmm. That's really good. Yeah, so like, <laughs> go, like hey, going back, I make, yeah, go ahead, Kevin. Yeah, sorry. Going back to when you use the the game of, to see how people would relate and like you give them a game and figure this out, then how would you follow up with that? Yeah, so then what we would do is uh, after it was all done, so, you know, some people feel like, oh my gosh, like I didn't get this at all. Like we did terribly. Like they felt like they were being judged. Mm -hmm. And we talk about that. I'm like, you are the supervisor. So, of course, your employees are going to be judging you all the time. And maybe you have a different style than your employee. But it's up to you now to determine what style you have, what style your employees, and how you can work together. So, for example, and I'll, you know, we'll go through the different, the different groups. When you were learning the game, what did you find was a struggle? And they would tell me, like, we don't know if we got the rules right. Um, we don't know. You know what I mean? The other person's like, I felt like I wasn't part of the learning experience. The other person just read the rules and I wasn't part of it. Mm -hmm. And then when it was all said and done, I didn't feel like I was fully invested. So then I was like, okay, that's great. You know, what did you like about it? And then they'll tell me some things they liked about it. You know, it was fun. And, you know, glad that we got to do something together. Then we'll apply it to, in this case, it was, I think, performance management and having discussions with your employees about their objectives and if they're meeting these objectives. And... Then I'd be like, okay, so how can you relate it to that? In this circumstance, if it was about performance management, we would say, hmm, well, right now, we're not really communicating with our employee, right? We're looking at it internally, like, these are the things I have to do, but we haven't had that conversation with the employee to be like, oh, are you okay? What are you, you know, how mm -hmm. can I help you? How can we help each other to make sure you're obtaining the end goal? I'm doing it all myself and expecting that the person will follow suit. Mm -hmm. And then they go, Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I see the comparison you were trying to make there. Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's almost like a lesson. Yeah, so you're almost applying like a mirror, it. so they learn about themselves. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And then they don't feel as I don't want to say judge. That's not the right word. But then they're they're a little more. They're not as reticent to to provide those kind of opinions about the challenges they had. Because if I just ask them straight up, what do you think are the issues or challenges you're having with performance uh, with your employees? 
I would probably have a very different answer. That just mm-hmm. kind of relaxes them a little bit, and then they can see the similarities between their communication mm-hmm. style, their employees, and how they can bridge that gap. Hmm. Yeah. That's cool. I love the direction this episode has taken. <laughs> that, that I, you know, when I first initially think about games that teach, you know, I think about like, oh, this, you know, this is games that this will teach me about, you know, I don't know, yeah. crop rotation or something like that. Sure. It, it, but, but, Vikings. but you're, that Viking, but, but you're really, but you're talking about, um, you're talking about games that teach, you know, uh, critical skills for both, uh, uh, self-reflection, self-awareness and interpersonal yes. skills. And, Correct. um, Boy, that's that's even more exciting than crop rotation. I mean, that's really important stuff. Oh, I, I love know. that. I, I don't know, right? Is, I don't know. You got to eat, a, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a uh, this is. I mean, no offense to people who crop rotate. I mean, that's that's. Yeah, I, no. I'm, I'm absolutely. glad they do. I'm glad they do. But um, yeah, this is this is an episode that I I find personally I'm looking forward to going back and listening to and reviewing because there's a lot of really yeah. good gems in all of this. So yeah, thank you. Like, like you don't what? need to use games literally. Right. Like some right. people, and, and there are some games like Votes for Women. You could literally use this, hey, right. this is some history for you, period, end of right. story. I mean, there's right. a little bit of geography in there as well, but you get what I'm saying. This little 15-minute roll and write that um, Grail Games, thank you, was, was uh, very kind to send me a few copies so I could use these in the classroom. Um, hmm. Something like that. It's just it's to teach some of the skills uh, you know, that we, or lessons that we were just talking about. May, may I ask what game it was? Is that, oh, yeah. Is that, is that, or is that... <laughs> oh no, 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 it's no, okay. no. You can totally ask. You it's, um, wow. My mem, no, my memory is horrible. It's the, um, one where it has, uh, two dice and they have shapes on it, like X's, O's, and lines. Oh, crisscross. Crisscross. Neat. Okay. Cool, crisscross. Cool, cool. Yeah. Thank it's you. great. Thank and you. the rules are very simple. So if you were going to use this in a teaching environment, I'm sure you could find multiple ways to apply it, but the rules are very, very simple. Nice. Mm-hmm. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Is there a game that you wish taught something but doesn't exist? Sort of a big one. So, so let's I, say I, I, I like, have, I'm going to yeah. give you two hundred thousand dollars. What would you What would you do in terms of game development? This is because yeah. I feel like the things that I would want a game to teach are things that people inherently should do already, <laughs> and not everybody <laughs> does. I mean, you can't. I don't even know, I, I, I'm probably not going to word this well, but, you know, things like, and this is where the game itself, the theme of the game wouldn't teach it, but maybe how the game is presented. Like, just teaching things like respect and kindness mm-hmm. and appreciating differences and understanding differences. And I know those are very broad and abstract things, but I just feel like, how can there be a way for a game to be like, hey, this is what I am, this is what you are, cool. Cool. Let's mm. let's see how we can work together. And I know we can do that by using a game. But wouldn't it be amazing if we could have a game like let's let's be clear. We're not going to cure everything in the world. We're not going to have world peace. I get that. But just in the the state of things now, and I didn't mean to make this very heavy, but just the state oh, of the world great. now, and uh, I'm looking at you America. <laughs> um, do you know we're what trying. I mean? It, yeah. it would yeah. be it would be nice just to have a little bit of some some, you know, decency and kindness and i know that sounds go, really lame go figure no no that's <laughs> preach it preach it we're with you you know we're with you. yeah i just yeah, yeah it'd be nice that's mm. all yeah yeah a game that teaches yeah, an appreciation yeah, for the difference. it almost makes me think have you heard about with the office and michael scott there's this bit about that type of person that if you've never met that kind of person you are that person <laughs> Does that make sense? No, yeah, no, I totally yeah. get that, but I'm not. So, nervous. how do you could create a game that helps Michael Scott understand what he's like? <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, yes. oh my gosh, I yes. actually, I'm kind of a <laughs> jerk. I just never I... realized it. But I, I don't know. I don't know what that would. Be. I guess it'd have to be an asymmetrical game. Uh, yes, uh, I, okay, right. Listen, this is a path. This is a path. I think that's uh, you know bringing up some great ideas for a game. So yeah. I think so. I think I, I buy it. That's a great game. <laughs> so I, I, exactly. I, we're talking about, again about games that, like you were saying earlier, maybe like games that encourage or nurture kind of self-awareness, self-reflection. Yeah. Huh. I know. It's, it's an avenue. People automatically, they take games very literal, li- literally and say, okay, we're going to play this game because the theme teaches us about X, Y, Z. 
sometimes you just have to apply it in different ways. I mean, most games you can find a way to apply something from that game to what you're teaching. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just that might not be literal. Right. Hmm. What about you, Daniel? You got a thought about a dream game lesson? Oh, yeah. You know, a game that I, that I wish would teach something that it maybe doesn't exist. You know, I, I mean, I guess I... I you got to go hard. after me, so it's got to be a that's, good one. That's hard to beat. No, it's hard to beat what Mandy <laughs> said. I, I would have to say something like that. You know, I find yeah. the challenge, you know, yeah, like a game that, um, uh, yeah, that, I mean, it's a, a game that would encourage people to celebrate, you know, differences. And I mean, that would be wonderful. I, you know, I think the, the challenge that, that I'm trying to think in my, in my head is, you know, I, I'm, I'm aware of, you know, there are games that have come out that, you know, like different faith groups have put out or, mm -hmm. um, different organization and which is all and wonderful you know which kind of geared toward cultivating you know compassion or understanding or things like that which which is yeah. wonderful you know they're they're not necessarily they're not necessarily celebrated as you know as necessarily like being like the most fun games or the most you know the most engaging sure. games and so i'm trying to think like what would that be what would that be that like a game that like 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 everyone really wants to play and it teaches compassion, you know, and, and, right. and what would that, what would that look like? You know, that it's like a, the hot compassion game. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. No. <laughs> Cause if games like are about winning, it's hard to, how do you balance winning yeah. with compassion for others? It's tricky. Right. Right. It absolutely, Unless it needs to be like an everyone wins. And we all know how gamers love games that uh, <laughs> reward right. ties. <laughs> right, 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 right. That's right. What That's about right. you, Kevin? <laughs> yeah. Right. You caught that. Eh? Uh, yeah. I don't know. It's tricky. I don't know. I, I've been waxing with Daniel <clears throat> about how much I like Cole Whirly games and because and oh, yeah. so many of them are related to power and empire. Yes. And so he just keeps developing interesting things that make you rethink about how power shapes stuff. So mm -hmm. I guess I would, yeah, I think the think about power dynamics and empowerment and so along right. those lines. No, oh, that's right. He did. Uh, did he do Pax Pamir? He did Pax Pamir. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was a beautiful game. It's, it's a cool game, and so yeah, thinking about these tribes that get to, they see these empires as just foreign things that they ally with, they ally with to to kind. Of, yeah, it, it's more about them and their their sense of success and empowerment, not about right risk where you're going in from the other side and conquering. So, right. Okay. Yeah. No, I can see that. See, and I feel yours would be a very good board game versus my idea and Daniel's idea would be a better RPG. I do. It I really think it would RPG. be. Yeah, well, right. I'm just yeah. saying that I like a certain type of game. I really dodged the question because I didn't come up with anything besides what I already <laughs> like. Kevin, I was helping I, you out. I know. Kevin, I appreciate it, it, but I, I, feel, I still feel like a wuss. But yeah, yeah. Um, power, is, power is an interesting thing and it's subtle. Yeah, so. absolutely. So, so a, a final off-topic question. Um, so, Mandy, would you have any advice uh, yeah. for aspiring board game podcasters? I'm, I'm just, I, I just, I just, I just know a guy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you now? <laughs> no, but yeah, any any advice for uh, for aspiring board game podcasters? Yeah. Oh what, my what goodness. Have, so what has your experience taught you about the that? first yeah. first time you delve into it, it's gonna be rough. Uh, if you want uh, some proof, Ooh. go listen to my early Dice Tower episodes with Suzanne. It was rough. Ooh. But Ooh. guess what? You learn from those yeah. experiences. Be yourself. There are gonna be so many people that tell you, Baby, you're not good enough or you know, maybe they don't like what you're doing. Doesn't matter. At the end of the day, do it because you wanna do it. I yeah. podcast and I'm in the gaming community because I wanna make things better comfortable for everybody yeah. that's why i do it people don't yeah. like that well that's that that's their problem so right. make sure you do it for you at the end of the day if you have something to say say it you know what i mean and if that means you're doing it through a podcast do that if you just want to do it because hey i love games that will think it'd be fun do that there's always going to be an audience or someone that enjoys what you're doing and it brings some happiness into their life do you need the fanciest equipment no, you start off with the basics and, you know, do it from the heart. Now, I will be honest. People do get a little fussy about their audio. So maybe spend a little bit on the microphone. <laughs> but, 
<laughs> just just say it. Video, they're a little more forgiving. Um, but um, yeah, do it from the heart. Be you. And I know that sounds super cliche, but if you look at them from now when I started, sorry, from when I started to now, I'm the exact same person. I'm, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm very opinionated and outspoken about certain things and I, I have a very high level of certain, you know, standard of ethics that I refuse yeah. to back down from even if someone doesn't agree with me. So yeah, yeah. Um, don't lose that. Hmm. Great advice. Great advice. Yeah. Thank you Yeah, I think much. that's great. And I'll, I'll piggyback that I think people will always value authenticity. So if you're Absolutely. not yourself, they'll figure it out. And, and we were talking about middle schoolers. Middle schoolers are the age where they start to... Oh, yeah. You know, they, mm-hmm. they, are, they, they know you're, they're kind of BSing them and there's just, yes, no they do. Yeah, <laughs> they do. Yeah. My favorite grade, grade, by the way, to teach grade sevens and eights, the really? best. Mm-hmm. Why? Why is that? Because you can be a little sassy <laughs> <laughs> and they appreciate the humor. <laughs> <laughs> y- younger than that, the sassiness goes over their heads. Older yeah, they that, don't. They get, they get upset, but, but then they get days, mad. Like, exactly. Right, so, right. right, right. Good, we're good, and, and I'm still kind of cool mm. there. Yes, so. yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. You start aging out once you hit high school. You're, you're in the sense of that they, they're going to see you as aliens because you're just you're not their age, right? Oh no, you're yeah. you're old. Like when I start, to, you know, I was telling uh, who was it? I was talking to my nephew, and you know, he's in that that age. And some of the kids, I'm like, oh, I'm so excited. You know, Diablo Four is coming up. I'm taking off the Friday to play the whole day. You know, with my brother. And I'm like, you you play Diablo? Like, how old are you? I was like, wow, yeah. <laughs> that's awful. <laughs> so yeah, right, I right. the coolness at that point. They don't, they don't think I'm cool. <laughs> uh-uh. Uh-uh. That window, like that window closes creatures. quickly. Yeah. It certainly yeah. does. <laughs> <laughs> At least it has in my life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, Mandy, Which, how can people back. find you? Yeah. How can Go ahead. people oh, find you? Yeah. Oh my goodness, all the places. Well, uh, Suzanne laughs at me because I sound like an old person in quotes here because I say the socials. Right. <laughs> so you can find right. us on the Twitch and the YouTube at Salt and Sass Games. Uh, you can also find us on Twitter at Salt and Sass Games. And if you just want to say, hey, Mandy, we want to come talk to you, you can find me on Blue Sky, Instagram, and Twitter at 613 Mandy. Bonus points if you know what the 613 stands for. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'll leave it out there so people can comment, bo- you know. Oh, you don't want to answer now? Um, I could. You so... leave we'll leave it out there. Yeah, leave, leave it out there. there. Let's let people throw it in the in the comments or something and see at, if anyone I'm gonna guesses. Use chat GPT. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> oh, good point. Six one three. God, I think it's a code about a new board game. <laughs> Six one three. I wish it that were. It was that it's, exciting. It's the, it's the cell phone number for Justin Trudeau, a mobile. <laughs> <I'm thinking> mobile. <laughs> you're got, you're close. We've got Justin on speed Ish. dial. Just, okay, okay, okay. His answer is his phone. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Justin here. Mandy, how are you? Mandy. Exactly. Pardon? How's the That's gaming great. going? <laughs> I bet he'd be fun at board games. You know he would be. And so would Joe Biden. I'm... Joe Biden would be like, oh, let's play again. <laughs> I think so. I mean, I've met, I actually, funny story. I know we're, we're ending soon, but I met, because uh, I used to work at National Defense. Oh, wow. And that's where I met the prime minister. He was there and it was just, he really? just seems, and he was a teacher actually before he was prime minister. So yeah. uh, you could definitely see the vibe of him. Definitely a board gamer. And uh, I didn't get to meet Joe Biden. I was staying at the same hotel and, uh, oh my goodness, that was an experience. Wow. FYI. I, I was so scared. I was like, I, I felt like I couldn't look anywhere because all of the secret services like, we need to check your bags. And I'm like, oh my gosh, why? And they're like, Joe, you know, and then we found out that the president was there. So I met him in spirit. Wow, you, you, <laughs> you encountered his security people. Exactly. That's so right. I feel like he could be cool. You guys could be, could be best bud. Yeah, gaming buds. <laughs> That's great. We yeah. need to do that for a, like a Patreon stretch goal, Kevin, as we could like play games with Trudeau and Biden. How about that? Yeah. Okay. Or their secret service detail. Or their sure. secret service I think detail. That could work too. We'll bring out Anomia and uh, Cthulhu <laughs> Death May Die. Yeah, exactly. We'll, Absolutely. We'll Perfect just... choices. <laughs> The earpiece comes out and they start rolling dice. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. Mm. Well, well, thank you so much. It's been great. 
Yeah, yeah thank really you for having me. It's time. been a pleasure and delight. Yep. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. So yeah. Mandy Hutchinson, Salt and Sass and Games, and thank you. And next episode, Alice Connor. Yeah. Yeah, Reverend Alice Connor is going to be our okay. our um, our guest next episode. She is a published author. She's also an Episcopal priest, and she uh, writes for the um, the the uh, Daily Worker Placement uh, website, and um, and she has a, a running um, series of, of articles on the Daily Worker Placement called "Playing at Religion," and she, in which she writes about games about religion games about religious themes nice. and so she's going to be on next episode to talk about her perspective on games about religion and we're really looking forward to getting to chat with her it's awesome i'll see you then thank you so much mandy bye-bye thanks thank mandy you. thanks everybody bye. for listening bye-bye